Well, mister, aren't you glad to see me? Well, mister, I'm glad to see somebody. Hey, Sonny, rust out of this, Sonny. Rust out. Name is Cartwright, Ponderosa Ranch. Well, I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Cartwright. I'm Jesse Pearson. Yes, sir. Now, let's have a look at this. I'll tell you the last time I try a shortcut without testing it out first. I figure with, we can get the team off of your wagon, hitch him up with mine. We you gotta... want me for something, Jesse? Oh, Sonny, this is Mr. Ben Cartwright, my partner, Sonny. Sonny? You know, Mr. Cartwright, I don't think we'll have to unhitch our team. Here, Sonny, come down here. That's it. Come along now. Now, you get right over there and get a good grip on it right there. You're not going to have he, he, He'll try. Now, Sonny, slow and steady. Just lift it straight up. Anytime you're ready, Mr. Cartwright. Yeah! 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 Oh! He's sure a powerful young fellow, isn't he? Yes, he is. Amazing, amazing. Thank you, Sonny. Thank you. Is there something I can do for you fellas? Can you give us something to eat? Uh, you'll have to forgive Sonny's directness, Mr. Cartwright, but it's hard to remember manners when one is hungry, and yeah, the truth of the matter is uh, who we are. Well, I tell you what you two fellas are going to do, you and Sonny. You're going to get in that wagon of yours. You're going to follow me right back to the Ponderosa. Because you're going to have supper with my sons and me. And you're going to have a fine supper, too. Well, that's mighty generous of you, Mr. Cartwright. Follow me. <laughs> right, oh, we'll be as close to you as your shadow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've been making the rounds from ranch to ranch, looking for work. Wranglers, farm hands, odd jobs, uh, anything at all, you know. Oh, well, you know, it's a pretty tough time of year to get any work. With Brandon over and harvest not for another couple of months. Sure ain't gonna be easy. Yes. Well, Sonny and I never let a temporary streak of hard luck get us down, do we, Sonny? That's right, Jesse. Uh, excuse me, are you two related? Well, uh, not in the flesh, Mr. Cartwright, but uh, certainly in spirit. We first met uh, some time back when we were both traveling with a carnival in the East. We sort of hit it off together, and, well, we've traveled like kinfolk ever since. Carnival, circuses, sideshows. Yes, we've seen every small town across this wide country of ours, haven't we, Sonny? Yeah, Jesse looks after me, and I look after Jesse. Yes, that's right. Uh, birds of a feather. Flock together. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, that sounds like a pretty exciting life, though, traveling around like that. Yeah, very exciting. Yes, yeah, but, uh, well, we, we've decided that we've had enough of it. Uh, and, and we're going to go to Oregon, and we're going to live off salmon for the rest of our lives. Uh, just salmon? Uh, well, Sonny became fascinated with salmon when I told him how they swim up waterfalls. I don't blame you, Sonny. It kind of fascinates me, too. Yeah, we didn't like the carnival anymore. And we're going to go up there, and we're going to live all by ourselves, just Jesse and me. And there ain't nobody that's going to bother us no more. Well, I, I think it's time we spread up. Bedroll, Sonny. That is if Mr. Cartwright doesn't mind us camping on his place tonight. Well, not at all, but like I said, there's plenty of room inside. Uh, no, thanks. We'd be much happier under the stars. So if you'll excuse us, we'll bid you all a fond good night and thank you again for a marvelous supper. Oh, you're more than welcome. Jesse? Can I thank him, too? Why, certainly, Sonny. You go right ahead. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> good night, gentlemen. Good night now. Good night.
We mortals live but for the day. And with bellies full and company good, let the morrow take care of itself. What is it the Persian says about life, Sonny? Unborn tomorrow. Dead yesterday. Good. Why fret about them while life be sweet today? What does that mean, Sonny? Well, that means that we, we don't bother ourselves about uh, what's gone and, and past. And we don't fret about what's going to happen in the future. Because we like it just fine with what we've got right now. Very good, Sonny. Very... Oh, he remembers everything I tell him. <laughs> well, you're giving some beautiful things to remember. Yeah, thank hey, you. you boys have been pretty busy, haven't you? You didn't have to chop up all this wood. Well, your cook was kind enough to supply us with an early breakfast, and Sonny and I were just returning the favor. Well, that's awful nice of you. Morning. Joe? One of the hands just told me Dal Brightman's got a string of new horses over at his place. I thought he might need a couple of hands to help him around the stable. Well, we certainly could use the job. Well, I just want to let you know I got to get back to work. Take care. Thanks. Hey, that's an idea. It's an idea. Listen, I'm going into town a little while, do some banking. Why don't I take you two fellows along and introduce you to Daryl? <laughs> Splendid. Uh, but, um, would it uh, be all right if uh, Sonny waited here while you and I rode in? Jesse, can I go with you? I'm just going in to talk to the man about it, Sonny, that's all. Mr. Cartwright, uh, could, um... Oh, horse! Horse, come on over here! <clears throat> um, oh, horse! Horse is a beautiful day, isn't it? Yeah, it's a pretty day. It's a beautiful day for fishing, isn't it? Fishing? Yes. And Sonny loves to fish. Uh, would you mind taking him along? Mind? Of course he wouldn't mind. Oh. Give me a chance to show old Sonny around a little bit, too. Huh? Good. Jesse. Can I go with you? No, I'm only just going to talk to the man, Sonny. And you know, there's nothing I like better than fresh-caught trout. You suppose you could catch me a, a, a big one for lunch, Sonny? You bet I can, Jesse. I'll, I'll catch you the biggest old trout you ever did see. Good. Now, listen carefully, Sonny. While I'm gone, you do what Horse tells you. You listen to him just like it was me telling you. Yeah, I understand? Sure, Jesse. Good. Uh, Jesse, how long are you gonna be gone? I'll be back before you even know I'm gone. <laughs> Come on, Sonny. Let's go keep them trout waiting. Let's go get the poles. all right. You know, in fact, the drover I bought him from, he was mighty glad to get shed of them. Well, that uh, Palomino does seem a bit antisocial, but, well, you can't judge a book by the cover. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'd like to do a favor for a friend of Ben's, but, well, the only work I got is wrecking these Bronx. Tell you the truth, uh, you look a little light for the job. Well, Mr. Brightman, after all, it's not so much a matter of brawn as ability, and I've been around horses all my life. In fact, my mother used to say that I could whinny before I could talk. And by the time I was 16, I could ride a horse standing on my head. On your head? Yes. That's where you're liable to wind up, right there on your head. Well, uh, Mr. Brightman, after all, every man is entitled to a chance to prove himself, and that's what I'm asking for, that chance. <laughs> And you know, Mr. Brightman, the Constitution of these United States specifically says that all men are created equal and that each is endowed by his creator. All right, you're going to talk my leg off unless I see what you can do. Well, you go ahead. It's your neck. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I think I'll start by getting acquainted with that Palomino. 
See if his disposition matches the look in his eye. <laughs> oh, yes. I expect to have an even better one next year. You know that north pasture, but we've got it all clear and fence, and that means I'll be able to double my herd of feeders, uh, providing, of course, you approve the loan application. Well, you're a pretty fair risk, Ben. Sorry, busting in like this, boys, but uh, there's been an accident. Ben is the fellow that you brought into Daryl to work in the stable. Oh, excuse me. Clear him away. Clear him away. Give him some air. All right, back up and get the doc some room here. Is that big Palomino, Ben? He pawed and stomped him before he could even get a rope on him. It took five of us to pull him out of there. Who is it, Doc? Oh. Ben? It's his back, I'm afraid. I guess I... Finally took on a job that was too big for me. Take it easy, Jesse. Oh, Mr. Cartwright. I think I went and got myself killed. I can't. I can't leave Sonny. He, he needs me to take care of him. Uh, Jesse, you're going to be all right, here. Mr. Cartwright. Tell Sonny. Tell him. Tell him what, Jesse? Sonny, let's, let's go home. Yeah, um, maybe, maybe Jesse's back there waiting for me.
Sonny. 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 Jesse. Where's Jesse? Sonny. Sonny. Listen to me. Now, listen very carefully. Jesse's dead. He's gone, Sonny. Gone? Oh, no. No, he wouldn't leave me. He ain't never left me alone. I ain't never been alone since I met Jesse. Sonny, you ain't alone now. Look, you, you take care of me and I'll, I'll try to take care of you, all right? Good, let's go. He was overcome with grief and shock, and he didn't know what he was doing. Now, Ben, I don't question that. But the fact is that he did cause Daryl Brightman a considerable loss. Well, I told... Now, I told Daryl that you agreed to stand good for the damages, and Daryl said he wouldn't press charges. Well? But I still feel that I've got to take Sonny into custody, that it ain't just safe leaving him running around loose. He's not running around loose. He's right here in the Ponderosa with us. That's because he's big and weak-minded. That's not a crime, you know. He'll be perfectly safe right here until we find someone who will take responsibility for him. And supposing you don't find nobody? I went through Jesse's things. I found that ticket. That must be the carnival that they worked at last fall. Well, it's at least a start, but, Ben, it's going to take a long time to run this down. Meanwhile, what kind of a guarantee do you have that Sonny ain't going to fly off the handle again and maybe cause the kind of damage that money can't pay for? Roy, he is not dangerous. He, he's a child. All right, Ben. I'll leave him here. And I hope you're right. Ben, I will do my best to track down this carnival outfit. I hope you have some luck, Roy. Cuss out loud. I'd better go on in there and talk to Sonny. What's the matter now? That Bernie Joe, I feel sorry for him, but confound it, I got my work to do, too. I know, I know, but he won't listen to me. All right, I'll talk to him. What you doing, Sonny? I have to go find Jesse. He's been gone so long, I... I just know something's happened to him. Ah, just hold on, man. Just hold your horses. Sonny, you remember what Jesse told you about me, I mean? About you listening to me just like it's him telling you? Remember? I remember. Yeah. Well, good. Because I'm telling you now, just like Jesse would, don't go running off nowhere. But Jesse might need me, Oz. No. No, he don't. I can tell you for sure he don't. But I can tell you for sure I do. I need your help right now with that wagon wheel out there. If I help you with it, then can I go? Well, we'll, we'll talk about it after a while. But right now, let's get on that wagon wheel. Maybe you can show me what I'm doing wrong. Come on. Sunny sleep? Yeah. Did you have any luck with Roy Coffey trying to find that carnival? No, not yet. You have a rough time? So so. It's kind of rough keeping him busy, you know. Got him painting things that don't need to be painted and fixing things that don't need to be fixed. And even with it all, he ain't happy, Paul. It's like he ain't he ain't got a friend in the world. I know. I know. 
that it'll work out. I know it'll, it'll work out. You better get yourself some rest. Yeah. I reckon we all need a little. This whole thing's kind of been upset, ain't it? Night. Night, Jesse? Is, is that you, Jesse? Jesse, where are you? Jesse. Jesse, where are you, Jesse? 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 Jesse, where are you? Sonny. Something wrong? I heard Jesse's voice, but I can't find him. Well, Sonny, it... Jesse, Jesse's gone. He must have been dreaming. Oh, he was calling to me. Son, it's late. You better get back to sleep. I heard him just as plain as anything. It must have been a dream, like I said. Come on, lie down. You all right now? I'm not sleepy anymore. Well, it'll be, it'll be time to get up pretty soon. Now you gotta get some rest. I'm not sleepy. Well, I guess, I guess maybe I'm not sleepy either. <sighs> when is Jesse coming back for me? Well, that's one of those uh, unborn tomorrows that uh, you and Jesse don't like to think about, is it? Yeah. Oh, it sure is peaceful and quiet, isn't it? I can see now why you like to sleep out here. Jesse and me don't like to be cooped up. We want to see the stars. They sure are bright, aren't they? Sometimes I used to think that, that I could just reach up and touch them. Feels as if you could almost do it, doesn't it? Hey, Sonny. Did you, uh, did you sleep outside a lot when you were a little fella? Did your folks let you sleep out a lot? I can't remember. When you were a boy, uh, I know you, you liked to go fishing a lot. <laughs> uh, do you remember wading bare feet in the, the cold creek? Feel that mud oozing up through your toes, huh? Did you ever see a salmon swim up a waterfall? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, well, that's uh, really something, isn't it? Sonny, don't you remember anything about your folks? A brother, or a sister, or a, a funny uncle? Anybody? There was this funny man at the carnival. Scotty. He was a clown. He, he used to paint his face all different colors. And he'd dance around real crazy, falling and everything. And he used to take a penny and make it disappear right in front of your eyes. He was a funny man. He used to cough a lot. Uh, and he used to sometimes late at night cry. And he didn't know anybody else was awake in the tent. But I remember, I remember his crying. Jesse told me not to tell Scotty anything about it. And why would a clown cry at night? I 
know. I guess maybe because he had a reason to. I suppose every man does. Sometime in his life. Well, you get yourself some rest now. Mr. Cartwright, would you read to me the way Jesse does? Then to the rolling heaven itself I cried, asking what lamp had destiny to guide her little children stumbling in the dark? A blind understanding, heaven replied. How's it going? Starving. Cheese over here, beef over here. Yeah, good. Save time. What's up? You don't want to come in, boy. You ain't hungry or something. Well, he's got to eat. Get him in here. Well, Hoss said he didn't want to come in. I in. know what Hoss said. Now, come on, get him in. You're really in a good mood today, aren't you? Oh. I shouldn't have yelled that way. I'm worried about Sonny. I'm real worried. Tell you, he, he knows, deep down, he knows that Jesse's dead, sure as I'm sitting here. But he just won't face up to it. When he does face up to it, I'll tell you one thing. It's the last time we take any strays into this house. I just... Hey, Paul. Sonny ain't out there. I looked all over. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. He ain't no place to be found. All right, let's start looking for him. That's no use, Pa. There's no telling where he might be by now. But he couldn't have gotten very far on foot. But we don't even know what direction he went in. No luck, huh? No. I went all the way up to the head of Belize Creek, then back down through Mesquite Canyon. No sign of him nowhere. Well, he could be in the woods on the other side of the creek. Well, if he did, it'll take more than the three of us to find him. 
Yeah, we'd better tell Roy Coffee. Yeah. Howdy, boys. Hi. Roy. I was just fixing to ride out to your place. Oh? Ben, I got a telegraph from Marshall down in Arizona. Sonny is wanted for murder. What? That's right. It seems that just before they left the last carnival job, Jesse got into a kind of a hard set two with the boss roused about. Sonny waited in to help him before anybody could stop him. He broke the fella's neck. So I have no other choice than to lock Sonny up and hold him for extradition. Well, Roy, you're gonna have to find him first. What? Sonny ran away this morning. Why'd you kill him? He didn't mean no harm. You shouldn't have done it. You reckon he's armed, Ben? No, I don't think so. Thought he is dangerous. Well, look, I, I figure we ought to... We ought to split up into three groups. It's a good idea. Uh, each one of us will go with, with a group. Uh, how about uh, you and Bill and you and myself? Fine. And if any of you men run into him alone, use your own judgment. Don't take no chances. We don't want to lose nobody. Yeah, well, try to talk him into giving himself up without a fight. Jesse. What did you call me? Is your name Jesse? No, it's Jamie. What's yours? Sonny. Have you been waiting? Nope. Fishing. I haven't caught nothing, though. Do you like to go wading? Yeah, let the mud ooze between your toes. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. Do you live around here? No. I, I got to go to Oregon. 
Did you ever see a salmon? Salmon? It's a fish, and it can swim up a waterfall. Aw, uh, you're just joshing. Oh, no, 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 it, it really can. See, that's why I'm going to, to Oregon. I gotta see him. No luck, huh? Nothing. What about you? No. Let's try on down by the creek. You hear that? Yeah. It's coming right over here. Busted. We ran into a giant of a man. Out of his mind. Tore into us like a bear. He grabbed old Ed up and flung him over there like he was a doll. and you say you'll go with me to Oregon. All right. I... I'll go with you. How far is it to Oregon, anyway? First, you gotta... you gotta promise. I promised to hope to kick a frog and die. Gee, a gun. A real gun. of deer up here. Sonny, let me down. Let me down, Sonny. I better be getting home. My ma will worry if I don't. Hey, do you want to come to our house for supper? No, no, we got to go to Oregon, remember, Jesse? Don't call me that. That's not my name. Come on, Jesse. We got a long way to go. Stop, Sonny. That hurts. Oh. 
You all right, Jesse? just a little ways farther, and, and we'll make camp up there, and we'll look at the stars. Jesse, you know the way. Please. All right. Just a little bit farther. Gosh, Sonny, I'm tired. Okay, Jesse. We'll rest. Any trace of them, Bill? Nothing. Well, it appears to me that we... Wait a minute. Well, look beyond that. Tracks in them rocks. Sonny, my mom will skin me alive if I don't get home pretty soon. Read to me, Jesse. Read those pretty things that you always do. How many times do I got to tell you my name ain't? Please. I don't read so good. Come on, Jesse, please. You think they're up there? That's Sheriff Coffee. Is he looking for you? Did you do something bad? No, I never. Yes, oh. you did. You did something bad. And he's going to lock you up in jail. No, I never did, Jesse. I'm not, Jesse. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I just want to go home. Don't worry, Jesse. They're not going to get us. I won't let them get us. Jesse. Guns scare people. I'll scare them away. He's not even shooting at us, Paul. He's firing in the air. Yeah. They're still there. Jesse, they're still there. But he's got a gun, and the kid, too. I know. He doesn't know how to use that gun. Let's move up on him. Let go of me! Let go! No, Jesse, no. Don't leave me now, Jesse. It's, it's just over the hill, Jesse. I know it is. We can be there in time for sunset. Please, just, just a little ways longer, Jesse. Sonny? Jesse! Jesse, don't go! Stay away from me! Jesse's gone. But he wouldn't leave me for long. He'll come back and get me. And then we'll, we'll watch those old salmon flop. <laughs> and we'll lead the good life. Just like he always told me. Just like he always said. Ben, take it 
Take a boy in town, Ruth. Come on, son. and you get the light stuff. Oh, brother, I figure you need the exercise. After all, you got a little weight problem. The only weight problem I got right now is in my two hands. <laughs> Morning, horse. Joe. Hey, how you doing? Morning, Bill. How's it going? Well, all right, I guess. Sure be glad when Sheriff Coffee gets back from St. Louis. Been nothing but trouble since he left here. <laughs> coming to. Yeah, I heard it's getting sort of wild. Wild? I haven't had a decent night's sleep in two weeks. You need any help, Bill? No, that's what I'm getting paid for. Forty a month and meals. See you, boys. Hey, you think you ought to go on and give him a hand anyway? Yeah, Bill knows what he's doing. If he needs some help, he'll call us. Come on, let's get the rest of that hardware. I was afraid you were going to say that. Yeah, right between the eyes. <laughs> Don't give us a drink, huh? <laughs> then you won't be needing these gloves. <laughs> and they won't be needing these head either, right? <laughs> Please, fellas. <laughs> hey, hey, it's time to give him a free ride like the other one, right? Yeah. <laughs> Out of this depth. We're just even in the score this squirt here for not giving us any drink. Huh? Yeah. They, they already had more than they could handle nah. when they came in. <laughs> oh, yeah, me. Well, you're gonna cool your heels in jail a while. You're under arrest, Dave. The rest of you fellows are giving you a break. I tail on out of here. Now, what do you have to say about it, hmm? Yeah, old Depp. Why don't you wake up and we'll talk it all over, huh? Dave. He's dead. What do you mean he's dead? Hey, Depp. Hey, get up. Get up! See? You all alone? Where's everybody? Well, Deputy Hacker, he took uh, Haas and little Joe. They rode out about an hour ago trying to pick up the kid's trail. They got me from the stable to guard a prisoner here. Right. Listen, uh, uh, would you like to see him? Yeah. You know, I've seen quiet one, but this boy takes the prize. Hello, young fellow. Uh, I'm Ben Cartwright, and this is Mayor Garrett. We'd uh, like to talk to you for a minute. You better tell us where the rest of those boys are hiding. Amos, leave me alone with him for a bit, will you? Who 
Cliff. I don't think you realize how much of a pickle you're in. You and your friends killed a man. You put an end to a human life. How do you think I feel, Mr. Cartwright? I ain't been able to think of anything else since. What about your friends? Think of them. How do they feel? Hunted like animals. What do you want from me? Why are you here anyway? I'd like you to tell me where your friends are. Now, look, I, I know that Dave Morrissey and Chuck Wilson are implicated with you. There were two other fellas. Where are they? I ain't telling you nothing, so get out of here and leave me alone. I'm told that you haven't any parents. Is that right? Sure, I'd like to help you. How, by turning me into a yellow-bellied tattletale? By getting me to sell out my friends? No, I'm not trying to get you to sell out your friends. I'm trying to get you to help your friends. Look at me. Look at me, Cliff. Now, I know that you fellas didn't deliberately go out to murder a man. I know that only one fella struck that blow. Well, the bartender told us that. So, uh, if you would tell us where the other fellas are, we, we could bring them in and... I could promise you a fair trial. Leave me alone. Now, Cliff. Leave me alone. I ain't gonna tell you anything. I ain't gonna tell anybody anything. What's happened? Who's been shot? Hurry up and get the doctor. <sighs> Sit him down there. I'll get his leg up. Ben, come quick. Easy. Looks like it's broke, bike. Sent horse for the doc. What happened? Well, Tom tried to talk those kids out of the rocks at Crown Canyon. They shot him and then scouted like a bunch of quail. I think I winged one of them, Ben. Them dang fool kids. Whenever you put on a badge, some young whippersnapper is bound to try and put a bullet in you. He's going to be out of commission for a while. Well, that does it. Beatings, robberies, hurrahing the town, and now this. Ben, I'm calling an emergency session to the city council, and I want you to be there. With Roy Coffee away, we need a new peace officer in this town, and I mean right now. The shooting of Deputy Hacker and the death of Deputy Harris dramatically demonstrate our problem. And so I say, if the only thing that sweeps clean is a new broom, then let us get that new broom and get it fast. And with Roy Coffey bogged down in St. Louis until that murder trial is over, Virginia City is in desperate need of a new law enforcement, the kind of law officer who can not only maintain order, but restore order. Now I'm talking about lawmen like Bear River Tom Smitty, Wild Bill Hickok, and Wyatt Earp. I have just such a man in mind. And in exercising my power of office, I wired him to come to Virginia City to accept the post of sheriff. Well, who do you have in mind, Amos? You'll see his name on this message of acceptance. West Dunn. West Dunn, gentlemen. One of the great lawmen of the West. A man whose reputation for cleaning up bad towns has made him a living legend. I'm convinced he's the man we need. Hey, let's take a look at this. It says, West Dunn, the Beau Sabur of the West, the dauntless lawman. Beau what? Beau Sabur. French phrase, means a perfect swordsman. <laughs> a little melodramatic, but makes a good story. Hey, look over here. Look at this. Picture West Dunn with Wild Bill Hickok. Take a look at this, Pa. Hmm? It said, these two men single-handedly cleared the trails from Dodge City to Abilene. Look at that. Hey, pause. Is this West Dunn really that tough? Well, that's, uh, that's what they say. <laughs> we'll find out when he gets here. Well, I'm kind of anxious to meet him. I think Mayor Garrett's right. I think this is the kind of man we need around town. He's tough, aggressive. He shoots first and asks questions later. That's a strange way for you to be talking. Now, what's so strange about it? Tom Hacker and Bill Harris were friends of yours, weren't they? Well, of course, but... Well, what happened was regrettable, but you don't change a whole method of law enforcement because of one incident. Well, they tried to talk to the Morrissey bunch. Where'd it get them? Well, Joe, you... That's the risk they took when they decided to become peace officers. Well, for $40 a month in meals, I don't think they ought to have to take that risk. Well, they don't have to take it. They decided to. Well, I think they made the wrong decision then. He's pretty riled up, ain't he? Yeah, well... 
Well, Terrence riled up. Yeah. Paul, what's, what's this West Dunn gonna do about it? I don't know. There's gonna be something. According to this, he's the toughest peace officer in the country. I so solemnly swear. Congratulations, Sheriff. How about a few words from our new sheriff, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not much for words, gentlemen. But I will tell you this. I came here to do a job, and to do it right, I must have the power. I will brook no interference, tolerate no undue criticism. I will do things my way, at my own pace, on my own grounds. The law is the law and will be upheld. I hope this is clear to everyone. Well, that's, that's well said, Sheriff. Uh, I think we've got ourselves a real lawman in Virginia yeah. City. <laughs> and I'm afraid I'm not much for ceremonies either, gentlemen. So I know you'll excuse me. I've got a lot to get started on. Oh, uh, uh, Sheriff Don, I'd like to have you meet one of our most distinguished citizens, Mr. Ben Cartwright, owner of the Ponderosa Ranch. Yes, I've heard a lot about you, Mr. Cartwright. We've heard a great deal about you, too, Sheriff Dunn. Uh, my son, Hoss, my son, Joseph. Yeah, I reckon we know about everything there is to know about you, Sheriff. Little Joe must have read a half hundred books about you. <laughs> is he really? Yeah. yeah, well, sort of. I, I used to think about being a peace officer. Well, I'd better get some peace officer and done myself and start earning my keep around here. Well, we'll get out of your way. Congratulations. Good luck. Good luck. Bye, fellas. Bye, Long, Mayor. So long, Mayor. Now, first things first, Mr. Mayor. I'll want a curfew for 9 o'clock, beginning tonight. Curfew? That's what I'll need if you want me to do the job right. I want the riffraff off the streets and the citizens in their homes where they can't get hurt. Don't you think a curfew is a bit extreme? I mean, it's, it's not good for business. Extreme times call for extreme measures. I want that curfew, Mayor. Very well, Sheriff. I'll have an immediate resolution drawn up for review by the council. Mr. Mayor, as soon as I'm provisioned and ready, I'm going out to bring in the boys that killed your deputy. I won't have time to sit around while the council scratches its head. I want you to start exercising your mayoral powers and start backing me up. Yes, yes, of course. you heard I'm the new law here. Now come on over here where I can talk to you, fella. I ain't got nothing to tell you. <laughs> now, I haven't got time to waste. I want the names of your friends. I want to know just where I can find them. All right. I'll do it any way you like.
That burned little critter's cut itself. You never saw me. Just get out of here. Chuck, I did see you. I saw you real good. Now, buddy, you're hurt. Come on. No, please, Hoss. You know me. I never meant to hurt anybody. Chuck, the only one you're hurting yourself now. Come on. Don't, Hoss. I ain't gonna go back there. I mean it. I don't want to hurt you. I don't think you're going to. No, I... I didn't mean to. Uh... Hey, Hoss! Hoss! Hey, Kevin, he's strong, Ben. Same wound in a weaker man, he wouldn't have any chance at all. I want you to stay with him. The great danger now is from hemorrhaging. You'll be back in the morning, won't you? First thing. Take care of him now. Night, Ben. Little Joe. Night. Right. You like the fire, I'm, I'm gonna stay with Hoss. Right. Mr. Cartwright? Sorry if I startled you. I found the door open. I heard in town about your son. I rode out, thought maybe I could talk to him. I'm afraid you won't be able to. He's unconscious. I'm sorry to hear that. I better get to him. Mr. Cartwright. Maybe I can cheer you up a bit anyway. I think it was one of the Morrissey bunch that shot your son. Well, I caught up with one of them, punk named Fred Roberts. You know him? Yes, I... He's the son of some old friends. I caught up with him at his mother's place. The fool tried to shoot it out with me. He lost. Are you saying he's dead? That's right. Oh, when your son regains consciousness, you'll let me know, won't you? Mr. Dunn. You sure that's a Morrissey bunch, huh? Pretty sure. I found some bloodstains leading away from where your brother was shot. So I guess Deputy Hacker was right. He must have clipped one of them. Well, I've got work to do. I'm going with you. No, I don't think so. Why not? You want him too badly. You're liable to go off half-cocked. I can't take that chance. You're darn right I want him badly, mister. I got a brother lying upstairs with a bullet in him. I'm not gonna sit around here and wait for the man who shot him to get away. Now, either I go with you or without you. It doesn't make any difference to me. You make up your mind. Get a rifle. I'll see you outside. Joe, I want you to get some hot. What do you think you're going to do? I'm going with West End. I don't want you to go. Pa, I'm not going to argue with you about this. I said I don't want you to go. Look, when my brother Hoss wakes up, what do you think's going to mean more to him? Seeing me sitting by his bedside, I know when I'm going out to find the man that bushwhacked him. Yeah, Pa.
How do you feel, son? A little bit woozy. Funny dream. I dreamed it. It was this woman, long golden hair, like the color wheat gets just before harvest. This pretty lady came to me while I, I was beside the stream or river or something. She told me a story about the Vikings. She said that a Viking, when he died, was put on a ship and. They just let him drift out to sea. How could you know? You were so small. Where's little Joe? He's, uh, he's with West Dunn. We're trying to find the. Oh, that ambushed you. Uh, no, Paul. I wasn't ambushed. It was just old Chuck. If I hadn't have tried to take his gun away from him, I wouldn't be in the shape of men right now. You get some sleep. Rest is the best thing for you, son. And have me s some more of that dream about them Vikings. I just. Put on them ships and let them drift out to sea. Cutright, you stay here. I'll go on in alone. I didn't come all this way to be left behind. Look, Cutright, I brought you along so I'd have a gun in back of me. Not in front of me, not to the side of me, but in back of me. There's a side entrance there. Cover it, huh? All right, you're in charge. for his gun. Which one was he? It was Paul Curtis. We'll send somebody back to pick him up. We still got work to do. Sitting there all night. He needs to sleep, Doc. How you feeling, Oz? Well, I ain't gonna wrestle no bears this morning, but I am hungry. That's a good sign. Let's take a look at that. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, now, huh? Am I gonna live? Not over sixty or seventy more years. Providing you keep out of the way of any more bullets thrown in your direction. Haas, you've got the constitution of a bull elephant. It's amazing. 
What's the matter? What's the matter? Your son. He's hungry. <sighs> That's good. <laughs> what do you feel like having? Make it something light. Yeah, something light like a T-bone steak about yay long and about yay Light thick. chicken broth. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'll, uh, I'll have Hop Singh or something up. Oh, Ben. It was quite a stir in town this morning. West Dunn and Little Joe brought in another member of that bunch that killed Deputy Harris. Young Paul Curtis. Dunn killed him in a gunfight. What about Little Joe? Oh, he wasn't involved. Looks like Dunn setting himself up as judge, jury, and executioner, doesn't it? Sure does, doesn't it? Ben, I, I heard about Hoss. How is he? He's gonna be all right. Come on in. Thank goodness. My prayers have been answered. I, I fixed him a little something. Thank you. You'll enjoy that. Come on, sit down. Ben, I... I had a selfish reason for coming here. Some money. Anything I can do for you, you know that. We've been neighbors for a long time and friends. First my husband. Now my son. It's been too much. I want to go to my sister in Ohio. I can understand how you feel. No, you don't, Ben. You don't know how I feel. When Freddie came home that night, he threw himself into my arms. He was crying like he was a, a little boy again. He told me how sorry he was and how afraid. We talked. For a long time, I finally convinced him that he should give himself up. And then we heard that voice, Dunn's, ordering him out of the house. If Fred had agreed to give himself up, why did he try to shoot it out with Sheriff Dunn? But he didn't, Ben. Dunn shot him down as soon as he opened the door. He never even gave Freddie a chance to give himself up. The horse is fed and watered. They're outside. Why don't you go to the hotel and get some sleep? You've had a long night. I couldn't sleep anyway. I keep thinking about Paul Curtis. Listen, boy. Don't you waste your time worrying about him. That scum got just what he deserved. Look, Cartwright. You've got to understand criminals. Well, they look like us and talk like us, but they are not by a long shot. They're a different breed altogether. Their minds work different, more like animals than humans. Now, when you deal with them like I do, you learn in a hurry. No quarter asked, none given. Either you kill them or they kill you. It's as simple as that. I know these kids are not hardened criminals. They did was wrong, but they got scared. I just wish they could have had another chance, that's all. Did they give Harris a chance? Deputy Hacker? Your brother? Joe.
once, I made a mistake. I was deputy to a marshal named Ned Patterson. I was new to the job. Ned Patterson was the best lawman I ever knew. I loved that old man. Well, one night, I, I picked up this kid who was drunk and raising cane in town. You know that kid? He, he broke down. He cried. I, I let him go. I felt sorry for him. Next night, that same kid shot Patterson in the back, killed him. I never forgot that mistake. Oh, would you mind taking that food into the prisoner, Joe? Cliff, brought you your breakfast. Hey, Cliff? Just put it on the floor, Joe. Hey, what's the matter? Are you sick or something? He tried to escape. Jumped me when I come in to question him. Ain't that right, boy? Yes. I, I tried to jump. I'm going out for a little while. When I get back, we've got work to do. Hey, you know, you really ought to try to eat something. Make you feel better. This beef stew's not the... Cliff, your face. I'll get you a doctor. Joe, listen to me. I've got something I want to tell you. That guy, that sheriff, he's, he's out to kill all of us. He ain't human. Joe, I, I know what we did was wrong. We ran because we were scared. And I'm, I'm ready to face any punishment I deserve, even hanging. But it ain't right. Just killing us, is it? No, Cliff, it ain't right. The only reason I'm still alive is because he thinks I know where Chuck and Dave are hiding. Do you know where they are? I think so. But I wouldn't tell him no matter how much he beat me. I told him where Fred Roberts and Paul Curtis were. I killed them. Joe, listen to me. I, I want to tell you. Maybe if I tell you... Chuck and Dave will have a chance. There's a place we used to go to as kids. It's at the north end of a little lake. It's called Basin Lake. You know it? Yeah, I know where it is. Well, at the north end, it's kind of wooded. We always used to talk that if we got in trouble, we'd, we'd meet up there and, and head for Oregon. You think they're still there? We agreed to wait there for four days. If all of us didn't show up, then we'd move on. You take it easy, I'll get you a doc. Joe, find him before he does, promise me. I will. Amos, Mrs. Roberts said he murdered her son. Ben, you only have the word of an hysterical mother. Now, how do you think that's going to stand up in court against a man like Wes Dunn? Well, I think that's up to a jury to decide, isn't it? Look, you can't let him go around using that badge as a license to kill. What do you want me to do? Get rid of him. Get rid of him right now and forever. Turn the whole thing over to the prosecuting attorney. Ah, oh, Joe, what's the matter? Wes Dunn's found out where Dave Morris and Chuck are hiding. I think he's gone up there to kill him. Maybe you better get a doctor over the jail. Our Mr. Dunn just about beat Cliff to death. Well, does that satisfy you? Hold it. 
Chuck, wait. Where are they? Are they coming? No, they're not coming. They're dead. Dead? Fred and Paul. Fred's mother said he tried to give himself up, see? And just as he was coming out the door with his hands in the air, a new sheriff they brought in cut him down right where he was. West Dunn. Y you mean he won't let us give ourselves up? Chuck, that lawman is out to kill us. He's not out to take us in. Now, how's your leg? It's bad, Dave. Well, can you ride? I can try. Well, you better be able to, because we gotta run, and we gotta keep running and running till we get all the way to Oregon. Now, come on. Somebody's coming. Something's got him stirred up. Yeah, is it those two boys or is it West Dunn? There's only one way to find out. Catch up with them here. Hey, Pot Tracks. One of them's dragging a leg. They go up this way. Set of tracks there. I wonder if they split up. One of them could have gone over the rocks. Yeah, one of them could be carried too. You want to split? Yeah. I think I better. I'll follow this track. Okay, I'll take the rocks. Watch yourself. Mm -hmm. I can't 
go any further. Leave me. Leave me behind, Dave. No, I... I ain't gonna leave you, Chuck. You ain't got a choice. This is it for me, Dave. This I'm at the end of my rope. Honest, Dave. four days. Do it all over. Yeah, I know, I know. We can't, so forget it, will you? I'm scared. Yeah, but so am I. Did you ever think of that? Chuck, you, uh, you got your gun, right? Yeah. I got it. I wish I'd never seen one of them things. I purely, honestly do, Mr. Cartwright. It's all over now, boy. Drop the gun. Joe, I'll, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you right in the belly if you don't stay where you are. I told you to drop the gun. Joe, please don't make me shoot you. I'm telling you. Stay where you are. I'm giving you a choice. You drop that gun or I'll kill you right now. Joe. I swear to you, I'll kill you. All the way on the ground.
Joe. He, he tried to kill me. I, I didn't have any choice. I had to get him. I had to. Joe, don't you see? I'm telling you. I didn't have one choice. Don't you see that? There's a judge and jury waiting for you. Let's go.